Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera where it's a very beautiful day uh, here today. I decided to come out to Aoyama Park to have a, a quick uh, salaryman's lunch. Uh, my lunch today is a couple of uh, onigiri or rice balls and a can of beer. Might not be the most uh, nutritious lunch uh, I could get but uh, it's convenient, it's inexpensive and quite tasty. Uh, after lunch I'm making my video here and then I've got to kind of get back quickly because I have uh, uh, relatives coming to visit today and I've got to kind of get things ready for them. Anyway, the subject of today's video is going to be another Aries camera. I haven't done an Aries video in probably more than a year. Uh, I, I don't normally tra you know, traffic in a lot of uh, Aries cameras in my stores, but uh, uh, this one arrived in the mail this week and it was a really interesting camera and in surprisingly good condition, so I thought it would be the good subject uh, for a video. Uh, the Aries 35 3S, and that's what this is, the Aries 35 3S uh, was released in 1958 and produced until about 1960 and uh, was a, quite an interesting camera. It's a fully manual rangefinder camera with a built-in selenium light meter. It doesn't require any batteries to use and it uses ordinary 35mm film. Uh, there were a few different kind of uh, Aries designs in the 1950s, three main designs. There was the original Aries design, which is kind of a, a little bit shorter camera than this, a little bit lower on the sides, a little bit taller in the center for the viewfinder and rangefinder system. Then there were the other three series cameras, which were the like the 3C or Radar I, which were kind of uh, copies of the Leica M camera. And then there were the taller, more sophisticated cameras, like the 3S. Uh, it's quite a bit taller because it has a much larger viewfinder rangefinder system and plus it has the built-in light meter in the top. So let's go ahead and take a look at the features, controls, and functions of the Aries 35 3S. And starting at the top here, I always start over here at the film rewind knob. Uh, this one pops open like so and it has a nice little roller tip to make it easy to rewind the film. What makes this uh, different from a lot of other cameras is that this uh, rewind knob fits kind of right in the middle of the light meter assembly. The light meter here looks kind of like a miniature version of the old handheld light meters of the 1950s. Uh, it's a selenium light meter which is uh, powered by light and surprisingly easy to use. Uh, what you do is when you are loading the film in the camera, uh, you program the film speed by turning this dial until the film speed lines up with the black mark here on this side. It's kind of odd that it blacks out the film speed, but you can see the, the speeds above and below it. And I guess that's some kind of uh, uh, maybe a quick exposure compensation kind of uh, thing. Uh, but it works quite well. And once you have the film speed uh, programmed, uh, that lines up the EV numbers here, EV scale here with the guide marks and the needle for the light meter. Uh, I'll describe how to use the light meter a little bit further on in the video when I get a little bit more into the details of the camera. Next to that we have a shoe here for mounting a flash gun and we have a PC sync socket for using a flash on this side. Over here we have this little uh, kind of access cover here and if you remove this you can uh, make adjustments to the uh, rangefinder. Here we have the shutter release button with this kind of knurled collar which you can remove. If you remove it, uh, make sure not to lose it. Uh, when you remove it, you have threads here around the shutter button and this allows you to attach a cable release adapter. Uh, this th the same kind of adapter which you would use on many of the old twin lens reflex cameras or cameras like the, the Nikon uh, F or uh, uh, rangefinder cameras. Uh, when you put the adapter back on, make sure you put it on kind of snug so you don't lose it. Over here we have the film counter dial, and here we have the film winding and shutter charging lever. This one kind of uses a gearing system to give it a short stroke so you don't have to push it very far to wind the film. It makes it very easy and you don't have, as I said, you don't have to push it so far to wind the film, but it does increase the winding effort a little bit. Uh, I noticed that I had it up in the 1-500 shutter speed, so that also increases it even more. But uh, yeah, it, it's a quite handy feature and it makes it a little bit easier to shoot the camera more quickly for those of you who might be interested in shooting a, 30, you know, a rangefinder camera more quickly. Moving to the back here, we have the <coughs> viewfinder window. And when I got this camera and I looked through the viewfinder, I was surprised how large and bright it was. Uh, honestly, I've never had a 3S camera before. and they're not particularly uh, expensive cameras here in Japan. I got this one for quite a good deal without 
expecting it to be in, in good working condition. But surprisingly, it's really nice. And when I looked through the viewfinder, I was amazed at how clean and clear it was and the wonderful uh, contrast it has for the focusing patch uh, for the rangefinder. It's almost as nice as the uh, viewfinder in the Konica 3A, but without the, the extra uh, uh, frame size compensation that uh, the 3A has. But the, the 3S does have parallax compensation. Moving to the bottom of the camera, all we have is a standard quarter inch tripod socket, nothing else, very clean and simple. Moving to the front top of the camera, we have the light meter cell for the selenium light meter. And underneath that, we have a small screw and we have an adjustment here for the rangefinder. So if the rangefinder, uh, the selenium meter deteriorates over time, you can adjust a little bit to compensate. It's a really wonderful feature, if you, which is something that you don't find on all the old selenium meter cameras. And that will allow you to get accurate light meter readings, even if the meter cells are a little bit deteriorated. Here we have this very big and large uh, viewfinder window. And over here we have the rangefinder window with kind of a, a matte glass around it for the uh, projected frame lines. Over here we have this uh, selector switch, which, which looks kind of like the uh, uh, slow speed dial, which comes on the old Lake um, Canon and type uh, rangefinder cameras. This is the mechanism which you use for uh, releasing the film winding mechanism, so you can rewind the film. Uh, if you turn it uh, one way to the R, you can release the film. If you leave it on the A in the middle, and that's for normal operation of the camera. And on the D setting over here, if you lift up the tab and push it, uh, that allows you to take multiple exposures. Moving to the lens here, we have a uh, focusing tab on the bottom. Uh, we have the depth of field scale located here on the very bottom, showing how much depth of field you have at any given aperture. And a cool thing this camera has, which not many of them do, is a, a indicator for using infrared film. Now, uh, infrared film, I'm sure most people who are watching this video haven't used it, but it's really cool. Uh, uh, to shoot with infrared film. Uh, I, I tried it a few years ago uh, in a very hot summer here in Japan up in the mountains and uh, I was really surprised at the kind of images I was able to get with it. It was really cool. Uh, if you have, haven't tried shooting infrared, it's quite easy to do on digital, but uh, with film I think it's, uh, it provides a more interesting effect and it's really interesting to see the kind of stuff you can do with infrared film. Uh, moving on uh, to the focusing ring here, we have a focusing scale which is arranged in both feet and meters. In front of that we have a couple of tabs here on either side which you can use to uh, turn this intermediary ring and this will allow you to switch between the shutter modes from manual or X-Sync or uh, V which is for the self timer. On top of that we have this little red dot and little red dot is uh, below the window for the uh, shutter speed indicator. In front of the shutter speed indicator we have another window here which kind of moves as I turn uh, the dial and that's the EV number or EV computer and you need to use that when you are using the light meter on this camera. And on the very front we have uh, the aperture scale. Now to use the light meter on this camera the first thing you have to do is uh, program uh, the film speed. So when you put in the film, you turn the dial until you have the uh, film speed actually covered by this black notch in the middle. You'll be able to see the other speeds above and below it. And when you have it uh, programmed, you would point uh, the camera at the subject and uh, the light reflected off the subject will be picked up by the light meter and the needle will move to a particular position here on the dial. And here it's recommending uh, uh, EV of uh, 14. So to take uh, to set the shutter and aperture, what I would do is push on this ring here around where the aperture numbers are and simply turn the dial until the 14 is lined up in the center uh, on top of the little uh, guide mark. And then we have... A, this uh, shutter ring here, or shutter speed ring, is knurled on both sides, and you adjust the shutter by turning that dial. Don't turn the dial on the front because that can kind of uh, change your EV speed range. I just did that accidentally. And uh, what this will do is it will give you a, a variety or combinations of shutter and aperture uh, settings which you can use in that particular uh, EV range. So if I'm shooting at say EV 14, I can get a range of say uh, anywhere from uh, 1 500th at f5.6 
uh, all the way over to say f60 at, or excuse me f16 at 160th of a second so uh I can, rather than changing these things individually, uh, I can just turn the entire dial if I want to, say, get uh, a shoot at a wider or uh, narrower aperture for more or less depth of field, or if I'm shooting at something and I want to freeze the action, I can choose a higher or a lower shutter speed without changing the aperture. It's a very fast system and quite easy to use. In the front here we have uh, the filter ring and inside that we can see the lens and this camera is fitted with the uh, H Coral 45mm uh, f1.8 lens which uh, was one of the fastest lenses which Aries made for their rangefinder cameras. The only faster one was the f1.5 lens which came in their interchangeable lens rangefinder camera. Uh, this is a six element lens and it's a very it's an excellent performer. Uh, I've seen some uh, wonderful photos. I did a little research on this camera on the Japanese sites here to see what kind of uh, photos it was capable of taking. And I was quite surprised at the quality. But anyway, uh, that's it for my uh, video review of the Aries uh, 35 3S camera. Oh, one last thing. Uh, to open the film door, just pull on the lever there and you can load the film. I won't go into loading the film because it's pretty much the same for this camera as the other 50 or 60 of these uh, uh, rangefinder cameras I've described. But anyway, uh, I plan to be making more videos uh, soon. I'm trying to get one up every other day or so. If you'd like to see these, uh, please subscribe. If you like the video, uh, please uh, click the like button. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you tune in again soon.